Lecture 28, Causal Profiling. At this point, we've got some experience in identifying some areas of the program that we think are slow or at least limiting the maximum performance of our program. If we are presented with more than one thing, the question arises, how do we know which of those things, if we optimized it, would yield the most benefit? Is it possible that optimizing something would actually have no effect or a negative effect? Um, well, the scientific approach is, you know, we do an experiment, um, we see the impact, and then we reevaluate. Um, so we make a change to the code, uh, and then we rerun our uh, analysis, whether that was a you know, benchmarking suite or whether we just observe the system as it is executing, uh, and then we make a decision about whether that helped, and if it did, by how much. You know, reevaluate in this situation. What we're going to talk about today with causal profiling and you know, not casual profiling um, is this idea of running experiments without saving, uh, without changing any code. And that's potentially a significant savings in terms of time and effort, right? If we can work out in advance, you know, this adds 10% you know, benefit and that adds 12% benefit and this adds 27% benefit, we know which one of those is the best because it adds the highest amount of benefit. And we could actually do that without changing the code, deploying it, you know, seeing what happens, all of that extra stuff. Uh, and that's the real magic of this causal profiling, is you know, we do the what-if scenario without needing to actually change any code. Um, and the example that we're going to talk about today is a profiler called COZ, um, spelled C-O-Z, but pronounced like COZ. Uh, and it does a what-if analysis that helps us to get an estimation of what would happen if we sped up a particular part of the code. Okay, that doesn't sound like anything all that special because you could say, listen, if I just look at the time and I see that you know, a, a certain amount of time is going to the work function, um, we could easily do a calculation that says, well, the total time of the program would be reduced by some amount by multiplying the uh, fraction of time spent in work versus the, the fraction of improvement, um, and then we would get an answer. And that's a very crude, um, although not totally unrealistic model uh, in terms of figuring out what would be the impact of optimizing this particular piece of code. The problem is it's not actually going to reflect reality. Right? Um, it's, it's not that simple. Um, and what we really need is a simulation. Right? Speeding up a particular function by a certain amount potentially produces some you know, good benefits. Um, ideally, it is a lot of benefit, but it's not a guarantee because speeding up that particular function might not make that big of a difference. Um, it might actually increase execution time by you know, increasing, say, lock contention uh, or some other mechanism, you know, it adds things to the critical path. Uh, it just doesn't work out quite the way that we're thinking, so it's not as simple as we'll just uh, guess what happens if we speed this up by a certain amount. And um, here's the observation that the um, authors of the cause profiler uh, pr uh, show, and they show it in their paper where they uh, explain the nature of this um, tool. Uh, and it's the idea that speeding up one area of code is fundamentally the same as slowing down every other part of the code. So it's all relative, right? Uh, and this is what it calls a virtual speed up it, in that sentence referring to the paper uh, that contains the explanation about the causal profiler. Uh, <clears throat> how is other code slowed down? It's, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. There are just pauses added to the code to make it take longer to execute such that you know, other things you know, appear to be faster. That certainly makes other threads run slower, there's no getting around that. Um, but one of the things that you might be wondering about, and I was also fairly skeptical until I sort of looked into it myself, is, is this really equivalent to speeding up the target? Is slowing down other threads the same thing as speeding up the one that we want to speed up? Well, here's an explanation uh, that is uh, provided by, again, the paper authors uh, in visual form. With the original runtime of the program is A, 
Uh, so we have a function in thread one, it calls f, then g, then f, and then thread two calls g, then f, then g, and, and we have to do these things in parallel, so the total time uh, is the maximum of whichever of those it is. Um, and then if our goal was to get an actual speed up by reducing the amount of time that was spent you know, doing, the, um, doing the function f, then we would see again the same behavior and there would be an actual amount of speed up. Uh, and the question then is, well, if we slow everything down, so we pause other threads while um, we're executing this, uh, this function so that we can simulate the uh, speed up, then does that work? Yeah, and uh, the paper goes into some more details about the specifics of how it works and how to interpret all of these things. Um, but hopefully you will take this as being somewhat convincing uh, based on what we see here, right? And when we optimize F, you know, when thread one is running F, then we pause thread two uh, to produce the, the value uh, of uh, how long it takes for thread two to execute function G. And when thread two is running F, we pause, and that happens to pause uh, while we're running function F, but that's okay. Um, and so on uh, for the third one, meaning we get a total time. Uh, and we can see what the virtual speed up would be, um, and we can see that the virtual speed up is the same. Okay, um, so given that you believe me, I hope how it works, here's some interesting kind of observations about uh, how the tool provides some graphs about potential speed up for your program. So here we get another layer of what if. It's not just what happens if you speed up you know, a particular part of your program by X amount, but it actually shows a graph of you know, more speed up results in the following behavior for the program. Uh, and it's done in this case using a, a sample program that has a bunch of different functionality, you know, searching and sending and organizing. It doesn't matter what they are. Um, each different color corresponds to a different part of the program doing a different functionality. Um, and for some of them, we'll see no impact at all. You know, saving, uh, speeding it up doesn't do anything. That might actually make sense uh, just from an intuitive level. If you know, saving is limited by the disk speed, then actually nothing we do in terms of making the program run faster uh, would make any difference. Uh, but this is a sample scenario because it's a pretend application that shows all possible outcomes. Um, and one of them is continuous linear speed up. Um, that's the red one. The, the yellow one is showing uh, we have some speed up, uh, but it's capped at some point where we've reached a maximum. Um, we have orange, which doesn't show very much speed up at all, and we sort of reach the maximum there quickly. Um, green has, has no impact, and blue has some situation where actually it gets worse uh, if we speed that up. It's relatively easy to imagine scenarios that correspond to each of these things. It's just really a question of your imagination, right? If we're computing the n-body problem, well, you know, any speed up is gonna result in a massive improvement. Um, so we should expect to see this behavior that's kind of like the red line, uh, which is if we could do it any percent faster, that's always good. It always improves the outcome. So there's kind of no limit to that. Um, and then we can you know, imagine that optimizing uh, something has no impact because it's not on the critical path. Um, you know, green in this case, um, like I said, saving, if that's limited by disk speed, um, then it doesn't really matter how much we do CPU pro profiling and improvements on its execution time in terms of code because we're limited by the disk no matter what we do. Uh, and then there are things where we can speed it up a little bit, uh, but it very quickly reaches its maximum because it wasn't particularly critical um, or it wasn't a big part of the program. Uh, and then we can find some things that actually make it worse temporarily. Um, and so making it worse tends to happen based on something like you know increasing lock contention, adding things to the critical path, um, anything that would you know, slow your program down is possible, right? Um, block contention is just a good example, um, but it, it could easily be, you know, we spend more time waiting for the database uh, or we have to wait longer for disks because uh, disk operations are now taking place concurrently. Whatever it is, it is entirely possible that you know, speeding up a particular thing actually makes it worse. Now, 
just because the profiler shows you that hypothetically you could speed up uh, the program if I go back to like the red line here you know potentially yeah it'd be amazing if we could speed it up this way but that doesn't mean it's actually going to happen right um, that it, we can see there'd be a lot of benefit from optimizing the red code in the sample application but there's no guarantee that it's actually doable to speed it up Right? We still have to modify the code or to change the algorithm or, or do something to make that happen. Um, and uh, I think it's fair to say it's not possible to speed it up to an arbitrary degree. Right? <laughs> there are some things we cannot avoid. Uh, there's some limit to how much speed up we can realistically achieve. Uh, so we're going to have to assess what we can do and how difficult it would be. Uh, and then after we have made a certain change to the program, we said, okay, there's the most benefit comes from speeding up the red parts you know, by X amount. Then based on that, we can you know, rerun uh, a new set of experiments to, with our new baseline and see what we can accomplish in that regard. So the source paper that covers this particular topic um, has a little table here that summarizes some of the uh, optimizations that they've applied to a few different programs. Um, and it seems to support the idea that, well, actually the tool can be used pretty effectively to get a meaningful speed up with relatively few lines of code changed. Um, again, if you wanna read through the paper, you can get kind of a better look at some of the specifics about what is beneficial uh, in these changes. And some of them are you know, replacing one algorithm with another. Some of them are improving caching, um, something like that. But these are you know, actual programs. You know, SQLite is something that I've written a little toy application that uses it. Um, so it's not a cooked example where, you know, of course we can get speed up by just not doing dumb things repeatedly. So there is something to it. Um, there is something there. Um, there are some limitations, of course, right? Um, this kind of thing works realistically only on one machine where we have access to all the threads. Uh, if we don't have access to all the threads that are involved in the execution, we can't pause them so we don't get the behavior that we're looking for. We're not able to you know, pause things uh, that are not under our control. Uh, and that extends also to things over the network. If we are you know, communicating with a remote server uh, or something to that effect, again, it's very hard to get the remote server to pause uh, at our command uh, for the time that we need to make that happen. The network also adds a little bit of complexity based around the idea that communication is not you know, instantaneous. Uh, so there is also a possibility that even if we could command the other side to you know, pause execution or something like that, that the amount of time it would pause would vary just based on sort of network latency and that would uh, mess up our measurements a little bit. It is, it is fairly challenging, right? Um, we could maybe try to simulate some sort of network thing by like delaying, you know, incoming responses based on the speed up that we are expecting to get. So, you know, just like don't handle the response uh, until we're ready. But the simulation gets you know, harder and harder to manage the more that you want to do. Uh, and in network communication, we do have to worry about things like timeouts where you know, we haven't responded fast enough. Uh, so the other side has closed the connection. Um, that sort of thing can just add that little bit of extra chaos that you really do not need uh, in terms of you know, actually executing and making sure it does what you think it does. Um, one other thing, of course, um, that if we want to um, estimate the overhead for this particular uh, workload, um, the authors estimate something like 17.6% overhead for this tool, um, which is broken down into 2.6% uh, for startup debug information collection, 4.8% for sampling, uh, and 10.2% is the delay caused by slowing down other threads such that we generate a virtual speed up. That's a manageable amount of slowdown. Um, it's not the kind of thing you would do on a time critical system or where you have you know, very hard deadlines that you need to meet, um, but it is fairly reasonable for debugging. Uh, I would say it's actually pretty good uh, in terms of if you just wanted to do some program analysis where you said, you know, I'd like to figure out how to speed this up, um, then you're working off you know, your machine or a, a special deployment um, that allows you to tinker with it sort of as much as you want. Uh, and for that application, this is actually quite good. So yeah, I think we could be fairly happy with that. 
Um, if you're interested in seeing some more of the details of the tool, then there is an author presentation here at the uh, ACM Symposium, uh, and the YouTube video here is linked. Um, it, it is about half an hour long uh, and is fairly interesting. Uh, is something that you might uh, you might learn something from. There's uh, more details about it uh, presented there, as well as some video audience Q and A uh, that may cover some of the questions that you have. Uh, but hopefully, this is a good introduction to the topic.